Okay, how to make a fat progressive house track like Dead Mouse? Obviously Dead Mouse is quite possibly a machine so we are not going to be able to emulate his sound exactly, but we will try and get pretty close. How close? Closer than close baby. Closer than close. Yep. Closer than okay that's enough. Step 1. Can you kick it? Get a fat sounding kick. EQ and process accordingly. Layer it with a click style kick for the transients to help it punch through in the mix. Don't forget to EQ the lows out of the click with the snare or clap. Try and slightly layer them off the grid from each other to give a larger wider sound. Normally I would suggest putting the clap just before the snare. Give those babies some distortion and reverb to taste. Try and keep all the elements of your track that fall under 200Hz in mono. Because we want to reserve all of the stereo field for the synths. Then add some hats. And hey presto. Bob's your nan's auntie's cousin's sister drums done you're basically dead mouse already. Take a bow and put your fee up and request 5 bottle of grey goose on your next rider. Ha ha ha. I joke. Or do I? Step 2. Make some fat sounding chords. Open up serum. Load up two saw tooth wave tables and slightly DT on them. Put the unison up to around 7 and put the octave up on one of the saws. Why 7 unison you ask? Because 7 is my lucky number that's why. Ha ha ha. Not. Because around 7 seems to be the sweet spot for voices in serum. You can put up to 16 voices on to get an extra wide sound but personally I think the sound texture loses overall quality when you add too many voices. Next add a filter I suggest low pass 24 filter, and automate the cut off in your door so that the sound opens up over time. Add some white noise to your taste, add delay and reverb to your taste. Step 3. Plucking hell. Make a fat sounding pluck and serum using these settings. Don't forget to give the envelope a sharp attack and fast decay so we get that classic dead mouse style pluck we so desperately crave. Notice on this setting we have the unison set to 1 on oscillator 1 and set to 7 on oscillator 2. This is to give the sound some solid body, oscillator 1 gives the transient some punch and oscillator 2 gives the sound some extra top end which is then exaggerated with the reverb and delays. Step 4. Don't forget to put kick starts on everything. Why? Because side chaining is for cavemen and time is money and money is time and so on hue hue ha. Step 5. Play with the arpeggiator. If you are using logic, you will find a built in arpeggiator in the midi effects section. Mess around with the chords you have made and see what works for you. Step 6. Progression. Grab the chords we made earlier, drag them up an octave, and slightly adjust the settings. This gives a nice extra layer to build up as we transition into the breakdown. You can also do this with some extra stabs, but don't overdo it. Less is more in most cases and adding to many layers will ruin the mix and overall vibe of track. Especially if you are also planning on adding vocals. Step 8. Breakdown. Make a cheesy melody. Cough cough. I mean catchy. You can achieve this sound quite simply by pitching up a sine wave one octave, then shape the envelope extremely tight to ascertain that plucky sound. Then add some white noise, delay, reverb yeah yeah you know the rest. And there you have it, you're a fully fledged cheese eating dead mouse. Here is the full track. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more tutorials on other styles of music let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe.